The motion reads, this house has banked key which reveal themselves. Without wasting any one's time, let's welcome the members to the stand here. It's going to be necessarily on the artists themselves, right? I think that's very important. 
But uh, more than more, we think that vaccine engages not only in social practice, but in commenting on current issues. I right? think okay? that's very important in the form of characterization. Why do you think that it's indispensable to banks' interests, right, at the point at which banks evolve to reveal themselves? We think that a lot of the political commentary, and this is my first substantive matter, material, right, a lot of the political commentary, right, is indispensable for an artist, as I've already alluded to in my introduction, we think, very importantly, yeah, artists are fundamentally different from any other form or any other actors who engage in regular political commentary, right? They don't just have a platform that people are always going to listen to, primarily because they are there and primarily because they are bad bread and butter to engage in politics. The reason why individuals are going to care what artists think about current affairs, what artists think about social critiques, is the point of view of the particular artist, right? It means things like we ought to know about the point in which you are saying the things that you say, right? If a white man like Sapiro, you're much less likely to have substantive political commentary and the point in which individuals believe that you just speak from the position of privilege, right? I think very important here, the point in which you can come and convince the populace that this is who I am, this is my backstory, this is fundamentally why these things affect me. You're more likely to be able to have some level of viable political commentary, you're more likely to be able to have some kind of artwork being a viable level of political commentary because that's what the system is setting my heart. But secondly, though, why do you think it's important that banks can reveal themselves, particularly in this narrative? I think banks are revealing themselves, essentially speaking, takes us the face to the artwork. It's very easy to dismiss kind of artwork as political commentary as, oh, it's that vandal again that you know, don't really care about. At the point in which you say that, oh, it's that artist who painted a particular bridge, or the artist who painted a particular wall as an expression of themselves or the lived experience, i.e. because they're a member of a minority group, i.e. because they're like, say, a uh, black South African queer individual was directly impacted by these issues. You much more likely to be able to get the individuals involved. Uh, you much more likely to be able to generate a lot more engagement in a particular aspect, right? I think that's very important. But once we go on personal fulfillment versus potential risk, the thing is that they continue to have artists like banks that have to run all the time, right? So firstly, there are important trade-offs that ought to occur. Firstly, you need to ensure that somehow you rebel against the system for which you as an artist, but secondly, you need to preserve some kind of legitimacy for you to be regarded as an artist, right, in the first place, right? Because fundamentally what you want is legitimacy, what you need is an audience, what you need is to tell your own story in your own POV, and lastly, you need to be able to do that in a form in which it's going to be relevant. You think that it's already does a good job, right, by giving the kind of artwork that's maybe regarded as taboo because that makes that means that people are likely to talk about banks. What's missing there is that it's much more easy to dismiss them because you don't know what their point of view is, you don't know how impacted they are by these issues. We think it is very important. On the trade-off, right, the idea that banks may be able by revealing themselves either one to diminish their capacity to engage in art whether it's regarded as illegal, we take a hard line there and say good because that's more likely to create the actual discourse and commentary that banks want and the positive effects of the regard as a master, right? I think that's very important. But secondly, we think it's also important in the sense that you're more likely to be able to have not only effective engagement, but to be able to have the kitchen set by because we know the special point of view crowds to the person. That speaker for the fine speech. We now welcome the leader of opposition to begin the case for this idea. Thank you. 
to critique society economically um, it has values or beliefs that go that are or norms that we don't necessarily um, value or buy into. We think that the country should understand this. We know that what is important is actually the value of the artwork and not necessarily who the artist behind uh, who the face behind the artwork is. I'll deal with this with it in my um, substantive matter. But let's look at um, the of engagement from what we get in the academies and so 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 the academies have taught us that art because it's something this art because it is used as a political community is indispensable from the art. We tell you this is simply not true because of the type of message that this type of this type of art that bank see um, the type of message that it's spread and propagates is not one that is inherently dependent on who Banksy is, what Banksy is, or um, where the view Banksy speaks from, or what it is that Banksy, um, whether or not he has moral high ground in which to see that. We think that the importance of this is not taken on the fire. The importance of this is the fact that the artwork, or the, what the artwork serves to do, is that it sparks discourse. And he's not trying to like, um, diminish this as if like, it's not an important form of discourse, and we think that this is very problematic. We think that the type of discourse that is false, one that is valuable at the moment in which now, not only are we going to engage with it based on what perspective is from, but we engage with actually the principle that the artwork um, um, is perpetuating. We think that this is very important because it allows for actual like, proper discourse and like, um, um, a larger variety of things. Secondly, um, Yusuf tells us that, um, that by revealing his identity, it's basically a sense of like, legitimacy because it places a face behind the artwork. We tell you that we don't like this because we don't want to know who Banksy is and what he does in his free time and whether or not um, he's someone of moral high or not perspective is from whether or not he's rich or poor. We tell you that what we appreciate actually is that the messages and the narratives that it, it, it perpetuates within society when it propagates the artwork that he produces. We tell you that this is what we value. Therefore, at the moment in which now, this is where something that's going to be hidden and it's all in my speech, that the, the, the message and the narrative that, it, that is perpetuated by his artwork is going to be hidden. That's the movement that he says is going to be hidden at the moment in which his identity is revealed. He said that then we cannot, oh, that as an accident, we cannot accept this as like, um, <coughs> something that we can do. Cool, then we move into my substantive, and the rest of my um, engagement will be integrated into us. But cool, no thank you, I said I'll take back the time. Cool, now what I'm just going to talk about is what we call cultural personality. This is to say that at the moment in which the movement becomes about one person, or at the moment in which the movement is this place, but it's like um, one person, we tend to this becomes there's no more mobilization that we get, there's just one person. The reason why this becomes problematic is that Banksy is able to propagate and perpetuate the narrative that he said for because, uh, uh, as an individual, because of the anonymity that he has. We tell that this becomes important because at the moment in which now he no longer has this anonymity, he can no longer perpetuate the message, the movement does. Second level of analysis, we tell that the moment in which that issue is real, then he becomes a new target. This becomes problematic because noting the fact that this movement is a one person movement, cultural personality, which we've just spoken about previously, at the moment in which this one person, who is the face and actually the only like, member of this movement, becomes a target and gets targeted and they get killed or ate or whatever, we think that the problem then becomes the fact that the movement dies. We think that we see this thing in instances such as like with Martin Luther King, such as with Steve people, at the moment in which the one person who is the head and face of the movement and is standing for the movement in its entirety is targeted and they and they are removed from the equation, the entire movement dies. So we think that this thing um, goes against and really what Lisa tells us about the interest and objectives that Banksy has with the art that he potentially is. We think that then we don't get any benefits from that. We still haven't gotten too far. Cool. The third thing I'm going to tell you is how, as, as citizens and individuals, we all have a responsibility um, to critique society. We think that because like, this is such that we all have the, the um, um, burden to actually actively contribute to society. However, we think that the limit to how much responsibility one person can take. We think that the limit to which now, banks, as banks reveals his identity, all of the responsibility of, perpetu- of propagating this movement falls onto him as an individual. <coughs> Not only is problematic because, of, uh, um, from what I told you previously about how if he dies, the movement dies, but it's also problematic in the sense that everyone else feels like they have no obligation to actually do then critique society or um, engage in these conversations because there's already some understanding for us. We think that this becomes problematic and it, it hinders the progression of the movement as a whole. I'll take it to you. We want Banks' personal perspective. What sets them apart from us like any other politician within the state? We think that the difference now is that the narrative that he perpetuates is not one that he doesn't set a narrative that society is like into. What he does is talk discourse and get society thinking about the things that are happening within society. We think that the difference is the fact that now we're not concerned about what point of view or we're not engaged in what point of view he's speaking from the other is from a rich or poor point of view. What we're engaging with is the issue itself that he's directly addressing, and this is what we're doing. And we think that he can only do this at the moment in which he maintains and retains this anonymity. Cool. Fourth, um, um, the label that I'm going to talk about is how, um, as 
the idea of um, the disappearing example about how you need to know that the person has a moral high. We think that those people who are not the rules of the falls of the individual are going to hinder the progression of the rule. We think that the rules of the genre of two folks of who makes it is and whether or not it has a moral high and whether or not we should actually be listening to it, as opposed to if you look at what it is exactly that it is saying and trying to do for society, we think that they can actually lose the plot. We think that designing like the banks and not really these identity at the moment in the genre, you can eliminate the flaws that he may have as an individual and actually focus on the good of the um, the method is that you probably is through movement, then we value the summary. We run out of your um, identity. Oh, next issue. The, oh, the last one I want to talk about is the identity that anyone and everyone can be based at the moment in which banks are not. That is to say that when we have things such as like copy and stuff like that, we're not focused on whether or not it's original artwork from banks. We're looking at what it is that the artwork is the represents and the message that the artwork propagates in and of itself. We think that this is to say that those going really back to the, my um, point about responsibility per person, we think that what this does is it reduces the amount of responsibility that one person has in order to stand for everyone else when it comes to social issues. But also what it does is it gives everyone the power to actually engage through the like, similar or yeah, through similar um, mechanisms such as through the object that makes it um, 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 the result. It gives everyone the ability to then actively engage in these discourse and discussion and actually be able to also then contribute to um, the result. We think that then his artwork still, we think that then because we value the artwork and the message of the case as opposed to the who the person is and their own personal views and their own personal opinions, we think that then it is in the best interest of banks to still remain anonymous for the reasons of artwork. Thank you, that's speaking for that fine speech. We now welcome Deputy Retired Minister to continue the case on their side. Thank you. The realistic idea that if he banks is probably a man because he vandalizes, he's probably a man because he does these specific things. And also, he means he's probably a black person because he represents ideas and violations of what we think that he is. Those words are only as important as a specific consideration of what banks is and what they represent. These questions only exist in the hearts of people at the point of which questions. Constantly, no one is agreeing that the banks are probably a white individual who is probably very happy to be very racist or against the principle of the conservation of society. That's why it is very easy to assume and think about who the person is. At the point at which banks seem levels and leverages the idea that who they are, it's very easy for society to interrogate this sort of art, this art, which is the lesson that the spectacle which it comes. The Mona Lisa is only as important as the person who did it, because if you only understand the evaluation of what the art is for that person, from what view they had and what they would say to themselves. It's important to recognize that today's debate that Shadow Khan cannot care and says that art is really significant after you view it and interrogate it. It's very difficult to do so because you consume the relations of what the person really means. Interestingly, when we went to the museum, we started by reading the names of the people who decorated the art. And the reason we read the names is because we wanted to understand the discourse that they have. If you're going to read black children, we don't want to know if you are a white person, but as an image, really, understanding of black lives and representation of black lives. We think that's more important as a consideration that banks and the fact that they can take any consideration for it for themselves. A few responses to opening opposition. First, they say the message of banks is not a pain on banks themselves. Banks as an individual. But firstly, the value of the message of our uh, banks is that the point which he's willing to take the risk to vandalize, so he is willing to take the risk to vandalize. The same thing, he is willing to take the risk to vandalize at the point which he understands that it's so important for them to express this part. It means it's so significant to them as a choice to go or any form of harm they might be likely to get. For example, they're willing to take a fine and willing to get a detained. That means that this part of banks is more important to them than any other thing. At the point of society interrogates and engages the part, banks is more than a for them to leverage this consideration and understanding. Social orders only change the point in which the person is able to leverage his understanding. That's why it was very easy for him to really be bad guys because we understand this individual should not be against transgender individuals. That means that the art is only significant for the variation of the person and the experiences. The second thing that they tell you is that people engage with art and not the artist. This is not true. The sphere of the nation was only as significant as understanding who is viewing the sphere of the nation and what she could do as probably a black black individual. Why this is important as a variation for opening up this twofold. First is the impact of how the individuals view Jehovah's The second is from what lens is Jehovah's Witness like that person. Is it because he's a tribalist individual or whether or not he's a very bad person or whether it's called out? It's very important to critique us for the relation of the present experiences and the how they view it. Why do you specifically get it from that scene he reveals, reveals themselves? Firstly, the value of the expressive nation which they have. Banks is probably going to be very blunt to find that society is engaging in art and the parents should understand who Banks is. Even if Banks does not get the same form of ideas, for example, maybe Banks, Banks is an Indian individual who does not express any sentiments of social issues and has this material, for example, they don't express any sentiments of 
minorities, it's very easy to say to teach very big banks in why they then go to have conspiracies of those individuals in the first place. People can't do that, but they don't necessarily have any leverage of understanding what a person is and what they represent. Second, the active banks is very happy to share information anyway. This means that banks, even though they're not getting any form of leverage in trial at the moment, they're more than happy to go to a step further and look at jobs because they're not going to get more accolades. Artists are very happy when they give it out to people appreciate it. You can only have that this was at the point which people interrogate you are based on the fact that they know who you are. Third, you take the initiative and the skill set to create this part in the first place. You create the value within this part. Banking already shows and indicates that they're going to pursue social issues because those are important to them. They want to represent them. That's inherently very important to them as a concept. We think banks is more than happy to review themselves, knowing that society can interrogate this part of the valuation of what these experiences are and what they need. A few points of organization specifically for message. First, I think the street art, street art is a set of expression and is a difference of identity. This argument is twofold. First, it means that when you create art, you want the art to be shared among individuals. You want society to be interrogated. But moreover, you want people to echo and see your valuations of art through your own lens. However, people can't do that necessarily when they don't know who you are or what you represent. It's very easy for banks to simply draw people who can't interrogate because they don't understand from what experiences that banks have. They can't think that they didn't necessarily interrogate the art that we wish banks has. This is very important because it's only the point at which we think banks has any leverage of his or, of his or her or their political control of narratives becomes easy for society to use their political control of us in the first place. Secondly, it's a defense of their identity. I think everyone has appreciation and gratification in the first place. We already showed you initially that they get the first to share the art itself. They're going to be very happy sharing the art and the lens which they do it on threefold. Firstly, there's a meaningful response you get from society when they know who you are. Society simply don't care if you're a black person interrogating white issues at the point which they probably think that you probably don't care about that individuals. You only respond to art meaningfully when you can interrogate exactly the biases that that person has, or you can derive some sort of of meaning. This means that even if people don't agree with that, so they probably agree with them, they can derive a sense of meaning at the point which they understand who the individual is. And that's the simple approach to identity. It's very clear that individuals only support considerations when they actually have that they can attach a face and identity to that individual because it's meaningful and very important for them. Sure, Sam. Can you guarantee that when people know banks' identity, they'll have a positive response? What if they boycott banks? It, that's perfect. That, that, that's you find that. That's because banks is more than happy to vandalize and probably get arrested at the point which he's not going to be happy with being vandalized with TV 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 anyway. This means that banks is more than happy to take the risk and the harm at the point which the art is out there, regardless of whether they're going to get any form of benefit. This is to say that banks is not there when people being happy about the art or being sad about the art. It's the fact that the art is out there, regardless of whether there's any repercussions. This means that banks is more than happy to take any absolute risk. Even if it's at the cost of their own lives, we think we'll be able to make it even more easy for them to ensure that art can be free in the first place. I'm not going to take anything further. Secondly, we think, and this is the argument I guess we can respond to a large part of the opposite in this case, why you're probably going to get a lot of bad aid based on the lived experiences that you have, not feeding to the artist's interpretation of the world. In this argument, I give you two things. First, we think artists are thinkers and individuals who can interpret situations from how they value it. It's very difficult to create an artist when you don't know who they are. The reason why you can't do that is because one, if everybody starts rapping and they say, oh, I'm true, you know exactly what you're saying, Victoria. The reason why that's important is because the message is direct to the people they want to do, they want the message to be for. This means that the Aries is not identified with the society and have the body, the body, the O and two spirit. People don't necessarily think that he represents the sentiments that they have. The song social fact is only important because we know that people do have that cross in Victoria. We know it's black individuals who represent this narrative because they have sentiments or reactivity. But there's a disconnect between the art and what you're trying to express, and people can't see the art materializing as a thought from a specific individual. It's very difficult for people to create that relative understanding of those ideas. Words aren't as important as the individual behind those words. But I think that words are as important as a person does represent them. Thank you. We thank that speaker for that fine speech. We can now welcome the deputy of the opposition to close the opening half here. here. Thank you. 
from the perspective of that scheme, why I don't want this. I am also a bad scheme in this debate. And then secondly, I'll talk a little bit about arts. Before that, tell me about it. Flaws in the opening of the case. Firstly, I agree there are times when the identity of the artist matters. General prison, this is one of those times. That's is doing generic social cultural commentary. Paintings such as Gold of the Moon, Critiques of War. If you look at the specific art that Batsky does, by the way, they never even give us an example of a single artwork, it's not like the sphere of the nation, where you need to know the identity of the artist in order to critique the art. A lot of it is very generic, but you can see it as a change of meaning, it's so specific. Secondly, they don't really show enough about why Batsky wants their identity known. They just think that Batsky wants their movement to succeed, and they think that their identity to be known means the movement succeeds. It's a hell of a case, which means if we show that the movement doesn't succeed, they have no reason why Batsky wants to have other reasons. Thirdly, it's not clear why the content of Batsky's artworks is too vague for the discourse they want to be ascertained. Because we look currently at the discourse having an evidence by the fact that we've been having this debate. And then finally, they put she says that they find the boycott of Bansky, think they try to have their cake and eat it in that case. We don't think that's a good outcome for Bansky, and Bansky will not want that, and they consider that. A recap of the other speech, because there was a last response. A cult of personality makes it a burden put on only me as Bansky. I want more people to take up the mantle. Two, I become an easy target of my opponents. I mean, I could be killed. I don't want that. Three, it puts on too much burden on me. I feel like I've done enough just by making the art. And open the government speaks a lot about how much extra work I need to do to make my identity known so people can engage with me. I don't have the burden for people to know my identity. I have not hold my burden enough by making the art itself, which is evidenced by the fact that I'm world famous. I don't want my flaws to be known. They really show us how there's a danger with flaws to be known because it is going to become a part of the source. They can see that. It means that the distraction will be on who I am rather than on my content. That is a concession from their side. I don't want that as Bansky. I want people to talk about my content. And they haven't shown me why my content isn't good enough for people to talk about it. But the most important thing is I do. I want to not be mine. I want everyone to be me. I want everyone to be me. In fact, right now, there are probably some copycats of Bansky that are seen as a visual works. I want that, and I like that as Bansky, so I want them to come out. So to answer my speech, you know, just two things. The first is, um, you know, different reasons why I like to be anonymous. The first thing is, an anonymity is not my identity. It's almost like Batman and Batman puts on their suit that that's actually who they are. They can no longer be Bruce Wayne. That anonymity is important to me. If I'm no longer anonymous, I will feel some sort of loss of who I am and my identity that I've crafted for such a long time. I don't want to go through that psychological effect of losing the identity that I've crafted. Secondly, I don't want to go to prison like Julian Assange or be held up somewhere like Edward Snowden in Russia. It's going to force me to make political <coughs> compromises. Edward Snowden must now show for the Russian government. Julian Assange must now beg in order to escape um, being held in London um, and, and in the Ecuadorian embassy. I don't want that to be my fate. I mean, I'm under Russia, where I'm now suspended in prison for 27 years, which also means that all my supporters now have to spend their time, energy, and resources. Fighting for my release is the fighting for the political struggles I fight for. I don't want that. Next, I'm afraid that my reveal will be so grand and become an event that will be commodified. Already, gold of the reveal was printed and then shredded, and that was auctioned. It became a massive spectacle. So I'm afraid that once I reveal myself, the reveal in of itself will become a commodity which will distract itself from my work. Next, I am a flawed human being. All artists are flawed. You need to be to be an artist. I'm afraid that. This will impair my work and that my flaws will be revealed. I don't even want people to know my flaws. I feel like I'm like real privacy. They will interrogate every single thing about me. I don't like that. I want it to be permanent. My identity is temporary at the moment in which it is known. I want to be the only dying sometime in the future, but people will still think I'm alive because they wouldn't know. I think I will live forever if I am unknown, and that means my art will live forever, my discourse will live forever, my commentary will live forever. That's what everyone wants. We aren't in an era right now where the Mona Lisa can live forever because there's one famous artist. We're in an era where there's too many artists, too much commentary. So if I want to live forever, I will stand out, and my anonymity is what stands out, not yet. I also think I'll be surveilled by the state and even by the public and by the paparazzi and media. I don't want every single movement of mine to be surveilled. That's not to do meaningful life and be able to do regular things, and my reveal will impair that. And most importantly, I cannot no longer live a regular life. You don't want to ask him to become like a politician. But once he gets, once they, sorry, they, we're using he because we're problematic, but because Bansky is a man. Um, once they get revealed, 
and I have to have to become a politician now. Which is exactly what you don't want on the open government side. Because now everything I say will be recorded. Everything I say will become a media statement, a headline, and they'll ask me for comments of what do you think about the war in Ukraine that I'm seeing with you right now. That will actually force me to perform the role of a politician instead of the role of a pastor. Okay. If you want to get to the actual substantive people discussing your work, what sets you apart from every other discourse? We're not a shortage of discourse. What sets your artwork apart from every other about you? Well, I think what sets me from the Hitler apart, what sets the pyramids of Gaza apart, what sets the Stonehenge apart, is that we don't know who made it. And that causes us to interrogate and think deeper about the artwork, which is exactly what my second point is about, why this is better for art. The first one here is identity politics can be divisive, confrontational, and unforgiving of flaws and aspects of people. And I they can see, that will become a conversation. It's bad for art because it terminates discourse, it terminates sports, and it prevents interrogation. It puts people into groupings, and once you support the artwork, it means something great about who you support the different people in society. What it bans is a man. Now, more men and feminists and non-binary people feel pressure to not support bans they don't want to be seen supporting an artist in the man. For instance, what if Banksy is white? Right? There's a pressure among black people who's not going to support Banksy because they don't want to be seen to be supporting a white artist. Yet, there's no one who strikes the artist itself. And then, secondly, anonymous art allows a more thoughtful interrogation of artwork because you have to think deeper apart from the simple answer about this is the artist and this is what they were thinking. You have to think about the content and the content alone. In conclusion, I would say, if anything happens to Banksy, there is no more Banksy, there is no more art, there is no more movement. Instead of all of us being Banksy, none of us are. We thank Banksy for the fine speech, and that concludes opening half. We now welcome the member of the government to begin the closing up of the debate. In a motion where we are required to make a conscious decision on whether or not NXT would actually want their identity to be revealed, it is very important that the first thing that we address is the full characterization that we give to NXT. There's a great form of characterization that we see here from the open proposition of NXT as a self preservative who's very scared of getting arrested and so forth. And the main thing that we see to this is that if that does NXT make this fear, Banksy would have simply become an artist that paints or gallery or something of that nature. But the form of art that we see from Banksy, what he tells you about, about Banksy and the type of person that Banksy is, right? And this is very important, this is a very important characterization as we are about to look at the main thing that Banksy wants to achieve through the artwork. We can already see that Banksy is in this for the impact at which this will bring because the diff biggest difference between artwork that you find in the gallery and the form of analyzation is just awesome. The level of impact and how exactly it will mean people and how exactly you will get people to react on an immediate basis, right? And then another form of comparison that is very important here is to see how exactly this has played out in the real world. What have we seen from these two types of activism that we find? One anonymous, anonymous activism and two non-anonymous activism. And to and to basically do this, there's two things that I'm comparing. One, Eric Snowden, and two, the hacker group called anonymous. These are both, these are two um hacker activists that are both and something in the United States to outline, to, to outline a certain, a certain miss, something wrong within the government of the United States. But there's a great difference between the stature of these two, between the stature of these two parties. Now, the most important thing here, why is that this identity important to activism, especially to Afro? The main reason why this is important is because of impact and interpretation. Afro is an inherent subjectiveness that is unique to the artists themselves. This allows for personal interpretation. Now, why is personal interpretation something that we do not get within um, this particular debate? This is because if this is to be a if this is to be a political or social critique of how things are going in the government or whatsoever, it is very important for us to know the perspective of the artist, where the artist is coming from, with everything that they are presenting. Now, all of the opposition presents the notion that we bring Banksy's identity to tarnish the movement, but this is how exactly this would magnify the movement itself. One, 
it would, as as stated, eradicate this identification, which is something I do not like. Now, why is this important for what Bansi aims to do? Bansi aims to exist as an activist, not a whistleblower. This is a great this is a this is a great thing that needs to be clarified within the speech. The difference between an activist and an and a whistleblower is very basic, or very rudimentary. A whistleblower just aims to expose it. A whistleblower just aims to expose, but an activist is someone who looks to critique and aims to change an impact or aims to change an impact. So how exactly will Bansi ensure that Bansi has the greatest level of impact within this within this notion? The main question that has to be made, that has to be asked, is how important is the artist's input to the artwork themselves? To the artwork themselves. So in this analysis of these two, of these two structures that we're going to look into, one, Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden built info about the United States after after 9/11, we showed how they had launched a mass um, surveillance on the people within the United States and. We still made a whole chat on privacy and how important privacy is. Now we have Anonymous, which is a hacker group that was highly popular in 2020 after revealing classified information on the present, on the present, and so forth. But there's a great difference between these two. Why? Ever Snowden is a lot more prominent than Anonymous, which is very shocking. Look, Anonymous is a group of people, and Ever Snowden is one person. Which is already say that the lack of anonymity has a very clear impact. Why that has a clear impact? This takes us to the main benefit of a lack of anonymity, which is public ability. The main thing that public credibility aims, the main thing that public credibility aims to do is show the people who are going to be receptive of your work, who you are, and the point of view that you come from with your work. And we find this to be very, very important with the as the tools of the government. But the extension that we provide to you is either that we are looking to eradicate our personal opinion or personal interpretation of our work. Because we say our work is inherently subjective. And that's that is the main thing that we are looking to do, especially because this is a an activist type of artwork. And as it is very important, it is very important that you, we ensure how exactly the people who will be receiving the artwork receive the artwork. And so there is no more misinterpretation or misrepresentation of what the artwork is and what the artwork aims to do. Yes, I'll take it. If Banksy is willing to vandalize the old things, right, is his activism defined by the art or the act of vandalism? The main thing that we're looking to show you here is that by virtue of Pansy being a person that is willing to vandalize and do all of these different and do all of these different things that are not really so society is local, if I could put it that way, is that the main thing that Banksy is actually advocating for is the impact of the artwork and not just the artwork themselves, but the level of impact that the artwork will have. And by telling you that the, that the artwork itself will have a lot more impact if Banksy is no. How is that will it, it have a lot more impact? Why? In terms of clarity. Because Bansi gets to offer his or her or their own personal opinion on what the artwork is and what the artwork represents. But the second thing is public credibility because people are most likely to lean towards you if they know who you are as opposed to if they don't know who you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank that speech of the fine speech. We now welcome the member of opposition to begin the case for the closing of the okay, <laughs> Having a word of question there, uh, your formal discourse would be viewed as something that does not conform to the crowd. That's something that sets me uniquely apart from everyone that has spoken. That's what Banksy is. The cure by that I asked to close in government is very important. Is Banksy's activism defined by the act of vandalism or defined by the art itself? Right? The truth is, vandalism is Banksy's personality playing out. That's how he wants to portray his art. Right? And that's why he's on the side of building. That's a very important aspect of the art. The art itself sparks conversation. The reason why the government bench as a whole is destroyed from this debate, which is about Banksy, by the way, isn't because they aren't speaking to Banksy's interests. The problem is they are misaligned to what Banksy, Banksy actually wants. Right? That is very important specifically in this debate, and that's something that you will get from closing opposition. 
another important aspect of this debate is, let's say Gilroy. Gilroy is one of the most dangerous places in the world. If you have an artist vandalize the walls of Gilroy with art, right? We don't really care about like what's happening in Gilroy, but we're more likely to look at Gilroy in a different light or to question what's happening when the art is depicting guns and children being killed and violence, right? Simply because the world of some government government has ignored what's happening, right? That's what thought-provoking art does. It makes people critique and question things that society has otherwise ignored, which is predominantly what banks is our stance, right? Now, what's the other most important thing about social and political commentary, specifically in modern day contemporary society? Two things. One, it usually happens in spaces that are privileged. That is to say, yes, government is going to talk about art galleries and how they want banks to be viewed and get accolades and how they want banks to be critiqued based on what banks is. Notice two things. One, that is disingenuous to who banks is and what he wants because he's just a vinyl, right? But secondly, note, those are privileged spaces. It means the discourse that can happen is not inclusive of, uh, like, of the large majority of society that has never been to an art gallery, right? Or people that can't interpret art in that way, right? So we value banks being viewed as a vandal that he is, him vandalizing, and him sparking discourse that is exclusive to him being vandalism, uh, being a vandal. I don't think we have gotten any sufficient justification from the government bank on how banks is art is going to be viewed in a different way or in a way that sparks different discourse and a way that we really know his identity. What is the third thing that we value from banks? It's the idea of controlling the narrative. That is what I'm doing, right? Government banks speaks about specifically including speech, speaks about how we don't have a shortage of discourse. We have so many artists, right? What sense? What sets Bansky apart is the idea that he's a vandalism, right? He recognizes the voice, like, we start to get a unique voice of people that are deferring out of the system. If you look at all, if you look at all more, like, forms of change that have happened in contemporary societies and in different societies, specifically in instances where the neglection of societal issues, oppression of individuals, there's been a certain shift from the norm. That is to say, it's individuals that did not conform to decorum that got the most change. It's individuals that participated in things like protest actions, right? It's individuals that did civil disobedience. We value Banksy's work because it fits into that criteria. We're not about having a conversation about like, violence or all the other issues that Banksy like, depicts art about as a, a, as a piece like in the museum. But it's a piece that's on the side of the wall that's been drawn by a vandal that you don't know. That sparks a new yeah. and different discourse, right? Also, note this whole debate, like, note something. Banksy could be caught any day while he's doing his art. Right? That is very important, right? Because it means Banksy's mandate and Banksy's right of the art isn't really in play, intrinsically linked to him as a person, right? It's intrinsically linked to his purpose, right? What do we think is Banksy's purpose for right. the opposition and why do we think we the most accurate interpretation of this? That purpose is Pathos, right? What does Pathos look like? Look like the human interaction, it's human emotion, it's how people perceive society, it's how people perceive like struggles, it's how people perceive change, right? If change looks like me no longer conforming to like, like town laws and bylaws that don't require me to, buy, to vandalize such a building or public spaces, that's the kind of discourse that I want to have. If I don't want to have my art piece placed in an art gallery because it's otherwise going to be viewed by cis heterosexual white men, that's the kind of discourse that we value, and that's the kind of person that we think Banksy is. Why do we think Kratos is important specifically in this way? For two reasons. One, Banksy keeping his identity concealed feeds into his idea of Kratos. He gets human interaction and he gets that discourse away from who he is. Secondly, we get a transcendence of Banksy's artwork. That is to say, Banksy's artwork isn't tied to an identity. 
You could be any, you could be a white man, you could be a black middle class child, right? But the art and the messaging itself, that is what depicts societal problems and societal issues. And the point is to have those conversations outside identity, that's why we're able to have unique and transparent conversations that lead to actual change, right? Note, Banksy is very much willing to go to prison or to be caught vandalizing for the sole purpose of depicting his purpose, which is the true meaning of papers, right? It relates to your love for humanity and your need for fruitful, like, um, like, like, like for humanity to proceed in a fruitful manner, one that leads to the flourishing of individuals. Why is prison opposition really in this fight? For three things. One, we are able to speak to art as a means of social change, specifically the art that Bansky portrays. But more specifically, we think that we best appeal to Bansky's interest and appeal to a manner in which Bansky can change society and he is congruent with his identity. Carlos Trotos. Thank you, Mr. for that fine speech. We now welcome the government to conclude the government bench debate here. Starting the speech in three, two, one. I'll no, continue. Okay, um, starting in three, two, one. Given the cases that have been put before the House by both the opposition houses, opposition benches, we've been given a case whereby apparently the Nancy movement is a risk of dying should the identity of Nancy die. Should the identity of Nancy um, reveal. But in reality, the matter that we face with is that the Nancy movement is not a risk of dying as a result of him or her revealing his identity. This is because numerous artists with base exact profile as a social activist who uses buildings and contemporary art to communicate with the public have revealed their identities and to date are still alive. This is a key example of the case of Diego Rivera, a Mexican artist woman who has been a social reformist and activist who has used her years of life to act to do social activism. Yet she's still alive. This clearly outranks the fact, this clearly outranks the notion that has been put by both opposition benches that this person is at risk of dying or becoming a target. Because the reality is, based being a social activist, as you define it, is causing greater harm to society with his identity not being known as a result of numerous people having been arrested and prosecuted in the past under the assertion of perception that they are based. Therefore, in whom, therefore, if you were to live up to the society standards of being social reformist activists, he would have to reveal his identity. This meaning he would be serving the purpose of being an activist. Now, the other question that we put to the opposition bench is that are you not at a greater risk not being known? Are you not at a greater risk as Gansi with your identity not being known? As in numerous cases, we have seen that the fear of the unknown has been known to scramble the way humans perceive information. This means that us not knowing Banks' identity changes the perspective that we see is artwork. Simply with the motion that has been given and the information slide that we were given, provided, one of the key elements that the slide provided was that Banks is perceived to be a handle. But would you consider this artwork to be vandalism had you known his background or had you known the identity of Betsy? Because the reality is that fear of the unknown creates a negative impact or a negative perception of something. This means that had we known, this means that if we as Betsy reveal our identity, we are creating a positive outlook into the general public. And at the end of the day, we recognize the fact that we are an artist. Our only job, our job, our main job is to create art. And what is the use of being an artist who is uncredited for your works because you are alone? Because the reality of the fact is that Banksy is not our real identity. 
vaccine is a, is a good organ that is assigned to us by the public. Now, one of the things that you will realize, first thing that you get when you punch in the word Banksy into Google searches and internet words, is the negative impact that society has. This is a clear derivative show, this clearly shows that fear of the unknown principle is an act trap. This means, should we reveal our identity, we have a higher chance of being positively received by the public. Now, the other thing that we need to look into that the opposition bench has somewhat ignored is the fact that we are an activist. We are willing to pay a price. We are willing to pay the price of being caught doing what we're doing. Hence, we use buildings that have a greater chance of reaching masses, the masses, in comparison to using our galleries. Because reality of the matter is the audience which is received by art galleries in comparison to buildings that we are using currently for art is very different. And it sends a different message. When one person would wake up in the morning and see the contemporary art that you found basically doing in current days on a building, they are far too there is a high, there's a very chance that they are to perceive it in a different way rather than having to go to an art gallery. In terms, in terms of the current status, status quo, we find that we don't know the identity of things. Therefore, are we really sure that the problem that has been put out there is entitled by Benzi or are they copyrights? Now, when we reveal the identity of Benzi, that becomes a clarification of which artwork in particular is accredited to Benzi. This clears out the notion that you present to the table. Now, moving on. With now, moving on, it is beneficial that the public knows Yancy's identity as a matter of ensuring that we are able to contextualize the art that he gives. Because in reality, every art form that is created by an individual artist reflects a particular time period and context for a stage in his or her life. Thus, his or her works of art, the artist, Thus, with his or her works of art, the artist can actually see the development of our time period in which he existed. This allows for the continuous and similar transformation of personal identity. This is where it is important for us to actually reveal the identity of basic and ensure that it is put out in the limelight. Because maybe it provides context to which the art that is being is being painted. Now, when it comes to the art that is being developed, are we truly to, are we truly to say as a house that with basic identity not we go? We are giving it the fun and the best interpretation that we can, given that we do not have the context of this background into this. We cannot say that, because reality is that for you to know how an artist reached a point in time where he used the contemporary art that is being given to the public, you need to know the context. Therefore, it is important for us to take into consideration that artwork has context, and context differs from person to person. Hence, it is very important that we place out the identity of banks and we find that it would be very beneficial for us to do that. I thank the house. Thank that speaker for the fine speech and now we come to the podium to close off the debate. Chief, we are here. here.
treating such meats with low meat companies in particular in some of the on on uh, what you guys call the middle size in this case, then we're going to go ahead and get a charge to see why we're going to get this in charge. Cool. So the first idea we get from cooking in government is that as boxes and the electricity need an audience, we think it was not true. First of all, because we think with the mechanisms that Dan is exercising and vandalizing, he is simply just putting putting this out, putting this out, out there and then he doesn't have to kind of certain audience. It's up to the people in society at large to decide what they might, what they need of that certain part. We think that Dan was a conventional box to have to pan and, and, and go and pan and talk to certain audience. It is necessary to be frustrated because we are keen to certain biases within people. We think that is an art to care about the art itself and how we can and how people can then interact with that. That's why you know that becomes important in this debate. Secondly, they tell you about I wish you watch the idea about the need for normal high product and artists to be to occupy this, this system space. We think this is a very problem in this in society where some institutions have become objects of morality and gay people of discourse. And we think this is why we play like brands that come to cause artists enemies and vandalizing um, also then becomes important because actively he's just a he's just a person or yeah, just a person who are in power of story that just presents ideas. The public can, can decide how they want to engage those ideas. There's no amount of like more morality and structure. When we get to that point, so the public can then engage critically because I'm being dictated by certain objects of morality. So we think of better in that regard in terms of promoting access to the, to the conversations and chats. Thirdly, we speak about identity and how identity in their case becomes something which they want to value in terms of this being a lens to which to judge the outcome of the artist. We think this judgment is your identity, it's quite important, it's quite problematic because identity is a perception within people who create people are partial views in terms of themselves. Just to say, identity is made up of a variety of factors. So, that's the thing about artists, for example, who would not, would, not would not be fully, would not fully encapsulate his identity as a whole, he just be a part, a part of his identity. Not such a dance's artwork by him simply being white would be a declaration of something and it would not really critique the outworking of the song. That's problematic. Lastly, they speak about the charity, they speak about discourse, and that's this this is called this discourse, apart from Banks here as it remains an anonymous artist. The answer is simple, panel, the answer is transcendent, right? We think when 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 artists, when 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 artists that have a face to it, people can engage the art itself. And at this point, this art becomes accessible to people of all of all times and to people of all of, of all races and things of that nature. Because that's the because it becomes about the art itself. And that's giving very much transcendence allows critical engagement and also allows for uh, prosperity to be to be engaged. So at that point we get what we need in terms of benefit by answering being himself. And we think Bansy cares about his work as an artist. Cool. Let's have OO. OO has a very good case in not to get everything we wish they present. But the case is outcome stage right about the magnitude which we can emanate from Bansy's artwork. Okay. What do you what do you need to conclusion on the conclusion of questions to speak about the principle that have a unique extension of tables. This is to say how, how, how the artist fancy interacts with the artwork and how one must answer to me. And secondly, how the public then engages the fancy and artwork and what it is to achieve. So I think at that point, on the way up, we are very open in composition. We are not going to talk about some, not going to talk about some direct engagement to um, prison government. Prison government is not a deliberate of their open government, they are not going to case today's debate. And there's a lot to be said about banks having an impact, right? But recognize, panel, this speaks directly to, my, to the first question I'm going to analyze in today's debate, which is the idea of art being indispensable to the artist. So what we get from the, from the government bench is that the artist ought to be known in order for like, some value to be given to their ideas which they portray to their artwork. At no point do they show us why this is true, right? And so we have no reason to, uh, to buy into it. We think social commentary in and of itself is a person simply expressing their views and then those views being critically engaged and accepted or rejected by society. So we don't think there's an intrinsic need to tie the identity of the, of the artist to the artwork. Uniquely panel, we think this, this, this presents like a unique problem like on the, on the counterfactual because once you ascribe identity to the artist, then the, uh, then the artist's identity becomes judged rather than their work. When Pule talks about Zapiro, right, and, and how his artwork um, um, depicts like social commentary, we think Zapiro can be judged for depicting Zuma in a certain way because he's white. He can be called racist for depicting Zuma in a certain way. And at that point, we're focusing on the depiction of Zuma in and of itself. We're speaking about Zapiro's identity and what we think, based on our biases, Zapiro is trying to show. So we think at that point, the artwork is frustrated in the message which, is, which is, it is trying to convey. So the way up here is simple. The way up is on the fallacy of ad, of ad, of ad, ad hominem being committed versus the potential of like uh, potential popularity being gained by the artist by revealing 
protecting themselves. We think this is a clear way up. We think the risk of at home and being committed undermines the legitimacy of the outworking in and of itself. And at that point, the pragmatic and prudent decision ought to be anonymous to protect the sanctity of the artwork in and of itself. We take this clash. Secondly, they speak about the trade-off between uh, personal, personal fulfillment and gratification versus like uh, conveying the artwork in and of itself and, and what this means. So they say so they say that the artist is not credited, therefore like they are harmed on some level, like on a personal level. Okay. We think this is not true, right? You had you had your chance and you absolutely gaffed it. Take your fourth in peace. So they tell you that um, the, the art is, is not recognized. We think kind of the art in and of itself is recognized at the point at which society is engaging with it and it's and it's occupying discourse right within that space and it's overtly there in public. We think the artist gains pleasure from, from his work being created and being spoken about in the society and we think human beings in and of ourselves define ourselves in terms of our work rather than in terms of like arbitrary factors such as our race, right? So we think at that point the artist is definitely gratified and credited right in, 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 in and of, in and of um, themselves. But further, but further we, we think that a true artist is happy about how their work is perceived rather than any award which, which, which they receive. We think this is why um, rappers such as J. Cole value like the, the social commentary which they are spreading through their music rather than the amount of Grammys in which they win and we think at, at this point they touch the soul of people, right? They speak to, to the idea of pathos, right? And this is why art is meaningful because it makes life beautiful to live and, 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 and that's, that's important now sort of the house. The last chapter is on clarity versus obscurity. They say that when you know the identity, you can understand clearly what the message means. This is not true, of course. It's an assumption, it's an intentional fallacy based on what you think the artist is, right? Based on identity. The counterfactual is on obscurity. Art as an art form is meant to be defamiliar, right? To create critical engagement and remove us from our everyday struggles. At that point, when Banksy remains anonymous, he fulfills this burden, and for this reason, we're more than proud to oppose and take this debate.